Howdy. Let's uh, try to put both of these data series on the same graph, uh, and that can just make it a little bit better. If I go back to this site, I will refresh. Uh, we can see that here in blue, you know, we have daily cases, and in orange, we have cumulative cases. Uh, so like I mentioned in the last video, uh, those cumulative cases can only ever increase, right? You can't unget COVID once you are infected and it's been recorded, okay? So that can only ever go up. Um, whereas the daily cases, and this is a big difference here, let's zoom in on this little peak, the daily cases can spike. And so here is a spike um, from last winter time. And so the daily cases spiked at 614, uh, but then they decreased, right? So we have a run up and then we have a decrease. Uh, so we're seeing this right now in Auckland. We've seen uh, a run up in the past couple of weeks and now we've seen a decrease. Uh, and hopefully the trend looks something like this and it begins to level off to just a handful or no cases. So that's a big difference between the cumulative and the daily cases. Okay, so we have here the cumulative cases and these ones have started at um, have started at our new tally of one. So let's uh, let's just delete that for now. That's okay. It can't find the data source anymore. Uh, and uh, maybe maybe we'll just start again. So we have daily and cumulative cases. So let's take all three of these columns and see if we can do it all at once. So we're going to insert and I want to insert a line chart. And so that looks pretty good straight out of the box. So two lines, daily reported cases here in blue and cumulative cases in orange. Uh, so, I mean, that's okay for just like three or four clicks. Um, but the problem is we're not going to be able to see any trends, right? If you were looking at the daily cases and you're thinking, oh gosh, how many are we going to get tomorrow? Uh, are we at a peak here? You know, it's really hard to tell. This part on uh, close to close to now is only barely above the axis compared to um, a few months ago. Um, and that's because of the scale of the axis. So what we want to do here is have each series have its own scale. So I'm going to click on this here to select the data and look at these two series and try to get one on its own axis. But this is not how I'm going to find that. So I'm going to cancel that. So what I need to do is select one of the data series. And I've got here series options. So I have the choice between the two that I've got. Uh, so it doesn't really matter which one you pick. So let's pick daily. Um, actually, let's pick cumulative and then we're going to click on series options and the series options, you can have primary access. So that's the Y axis here and it has to include everything. So that's why we go from zero uh, all the way up to 30,000. So if we click secondary access, you know, immediately it changes and we can get an idea uh, of what has happened here. So daily reported cases is now on the left hand axis up to 2000 and cumulative cases is on the right hand axis uh, up to we started at 30,000 here and up to almost 70,000. So there we have it. There's no trend line on here though. And the next thing I want to do is be able to predict what's going to happen in the future. So I want to be able to, you know, use my crystal ball here and um, let's say what's going to happen, you know, at the end of September, for example. So in order to do this, I need to get a trend line going here. So I'm going to right click, add a trend line. Um, I need to sort out the series type. So I'm just going to click on the data series, click on the options. So I need to click on the date here and change it to a text axis and then the trend line pops up and we can actually see it's been listed in the legend here as well. 
So that looks all well and good. And just for daily, I'm not going to do one on the cumulative. We saw in the last video how we could handle an exponential function for that one. So I'll just stick with the daily because we started at a nice low number here. So the chart's already primed for this. So for my trend line, let's click right on the trend line and let's explore this forecast section. So we have forward and backward forecast. So these are periods. So the axis that we were talking about has daily data. So if I put in 10 here, this is going to forecast ahead 10 periods. Okay, so here's my trend line going well ahead of the data point. So this data point here says uh, September 10th. Uh, and then the trend line says, well, these are daily cases. So on September 20th, we can expect 4,000 cases per day, you know, if nothing else changes. Um, and, you know, we can get kind of silly. We can say, well, what's going to happen 100 days out, right? Uh, so closer uh, to peak summertime, and we can have a look at the graph. Again, we're reading off the left-hand axis. So if growth goes unchecked, daily cases 100 days from now will be somewhere around 70,000, right? And uh, no, 700,000, okay? Um, and so watch your zeros there. Uh, so that is, you know, huge, massive growth. Now, there, there's no way that that would happen, um, particularly because of all the countermeasures that are in place. Uh, and also there's going to be some, you know, physical limiting factor uh, to how fast something like this can spread. Uh, and if you're uh, really into this, what you can do is you can go back and look at historical data and see how bad the um, growth in something like um, catching a disease, you know, human to human transmission, you can look at historical data and see how bad it can get and use that to sort of put a, a rate limit on what you're doing. Um, so anything too far in the future is um, probably a fool's errand. Uh, anything even maybe 10 days in the future as well, uh, really hard to predict, right? I wouldn't want to have to predict the weather 10 days from now. Um, I, could, I could look up the climate data and say, well, usually at the end of September, you know, uh, it's 21 and fine. Um, maybe not that high, maybe like 19 and fine. Uh, but it would be a, a silly task to try to actually predict the weather. So the same thing happens here. Now, here's the equation that we had up last time. So for this equation, uh, what you could do is you could put in the x value and actually calculate what the number is going to be here um, or get some, some significantly high resolution to be able to read it off the axis. So that's how we can forecast some periods into the future. And you can do this um, with any type of data that you have in Excel. You have to add the model click on the model, and then you're looking for this forecast button where we have in this case period, so two weeks maybe, 14 days out. Um, that's what it looks like. Okay, that's it for now. Next up, we're going to be looking at some data uh, and looking at, instead of growth, we're going to look at decay.